Straight all day. Straight all day. You learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there, boldly and offensively, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights strategies and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called work on your game my name is dre baldwin also known as dre all day and welcome to the show and today's topic is why you are not getting better at your job we're going to uh, get into that in a moment first let me tell you uh, two things number one I send out a text message every day guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point to start the day i call it the daily motivation if you want to receive this message all you got to do to get it is text me at my number which is 305-384-6894 and every day when that message comes out including the Monday motivation I send out every week, you have the opportunity to be receiving that message. So as soon as you text me, we'll tell you what your options are. Just text me at that number. Secondly, work on your game, university. That is the only place I do any coaching. So any of you who's listened to this and uh, you are looking for a coach, you never thought about coaching. Now that I mentioned it, now you're thinking about it. You're wondering, well, what would it be like to have somebody like Dre as my coach? The only way for you to find out is to go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. That's the only place that it takes place. That link is down below in the description as well. And again, it is work on your game, university. Dot com. With all that out the way, let's get into the topic, which is why you are not getting better at your job. Now, I thought about this topic when I was looking over some things that were happening in the basketball space and just like the basketball, NBA basketball season, which by the time you're listening to this is in full swing. It has started even as I've at the moment of this recording. And a thought flashed through my mind about a few basketball players, players who I will not name here today. It's not really about them who played pro basketball at, you know, for, at different times. And they played for many years, but they never seemed to get better at any particular skill. I Meaning they came into the pro league and they could do whatever they could do. And then years went by, they were still in the pro leagues doing what they could do, but they didn't really improve their ability. They were the same player in year five that they had been in year one. And I got to thinking about how, how is it possible if someone does something, does a full-time job, and they don't get any better at the job. It's similar to how someone is, if you're running a business, and your business made a certain amount of money five years ago, and now is making maybe the same amount this year. How are you, why are you not getting better at generating revenue? If generating revenue is indeed one of the goals of your business, how is this, how is it possible that this type of stuff happens? How does this happen to people, or how does it, doesn't happen to people, but how is this the result that people produce? Let's just call it that. And although these people, again, they have full time jobs doing this thing, whatever it is, and hopefully being paid for it. I mean, if you have a full time job, you're getting paid for it. And um, when I was thinking, I was thinking about basketball specifically, I, I was thinking about a couple of players and basketball sparked this idea. But this is extremely prevalent in many people in damn near every profession. So this is not at all limited to sports. You can apply this to uh, some of you. In the industries in which you work, you may be guilty of this, or you may have colleagues who are guilty of this. Any of you who employs people, you may have people who work for you who are guilty of this. This is, this is an extremely prevalent thing. Basketball is a very, very small percentage of people play basketball for a living. Most people do not, or any sport, but for that matter. And people can work in a place for a very long time, never get better at anything that that job requires. They're the same person that they were, again, five, 10 years ago. My question that I pose to myself is how does this happen and why does it happen? And you, the listener today, you're going to hear the answers to those questions. And while you're listening, let me inform you or let me remind you, you need to check yourself and make sure that the things that I say here today are not true about you because uh, you might be guilty of this. So don't listen to this thinking I'm talking about uh, somebody other than yourself because it might be you. So if I say something here that is, uh, reflective of a reflection of you and where you're at, then hey, you need to check yourself and hold yourself accountable for the same way that uh, you would hold another person accountable for these things being true. So let's get into it. Point number one, today's topic once again is why, <coughs> excuse me, you are not getting better at your job. Number one, you are comfortable just having the position and not really concerned about getting better or even, even being good at what you do. This absolutely happens. How many of you have ever walked into a business? And there was a person there working. They were clearly at work. They had maybe had on a name tag or a uniform or they were standing behind a register or they were just standing there, i.e. they were not. And you could tell that they were not a customer like you, but they were actually at work 
and they didn't seem very enthusiastic about doing their job, let alone doing it well. Any of you ever experienced that? You experience this a lot if you go into retail businesses, because at retail, usually you have many people, not always, but many people in retail businesses, these are entry level jobs, meaning you need no prior experience or skills or you no know, certain degrees, et cetera, in order to get the job. So these uh, companies who hire people at the retail level are often picking from the bottom of the barrel when it comes to talent, ability, experience, and skill set. And that's not a personal knock on any of you who happens to work in retail. I have worked in retail. I probably worked more jobs in retail than most of you who listen to this. And at the time when I was working in retail, guess what I was? I was an entry level, bottom of the barrel, skill wise employee in the workforce. That's who I was. That's why I was working an entry level job because I had entry level skills. So this is not a personal knock on you. If you take that as a personal knock, uh, I'll tell you right now to save you a whole lot of time. You are listening to the wrong show and the wrong person. So uh, those of you who are still listening, let's continue. When you go into some of these businesses, I, I told you this, if you've been listening for a while, you may have heard me tell the story how I went into a store called Suit Supply. Y'all may be familiar with it. They don't have a, a ton of locations, but they are in big cities. Suit Supply, they do exactly what it sounds like they do. They sell suits. And it's a, a pretty popular, well-known place. There's a guy in my building. I don't know his name, but I saw him in the elevator maybe two weeks ago from the day I'm recording this. He had a really nice suit. And I asked him, where did he get the suit from? He said, suit supply. I said, it looks really good. He thanked me and he got off the elevator. Looked good on him. Now, suit supply. And there are some uh, guys who are around my, my size who I've seen wearing suits from suit supply. And their suits look pretty good. I had never bought a suit from suit supply. And the reason I never bought a suit from suit supply is because I was in suit supply maybe three months ago. And nobody tried to sell me anything. Now, you may be wondering, why would... A guy who wears suits all the time, walk in a suit store, and nobody tries to sell him a suit. Well, this particular day, I was not wearing a suit. I was wearing a white t-shirt, some basketball shorts, and some Jordan sneakers. And I, I surmised from my experience that the eight salespeople who were in there just looked at me, uh, sized me up, and said, this guy probably is not a customer for suits. And nobody even engaged me in conversation about a suit, let alone tried to sell me one. I looked around for a while, looked at all the stuff they had, and I walked out. And I mean, they said hi and bye. But nobody tried to sell me anything. So Soup Supply, if you, uh, your company or anybody who uh, works at or knows anyone who works at the Soup Supply store in Miami, Florida, there's only one of them, then yes, y'all are the ones I'm talking about. And I went in there a second time, maybe about a week and a half ago from when I'm recording this. I had my son with me this particular day. So I wasn't really in buying mode. I was just going in just to look around and to see if that first experience was going to be uh, reflective of the second experience. And it pretty much was. Now, the second time I had my son with me, he's a, a baby. He's, he can walk, but he's no, a baby. So they might have been thinking maybe I was just walking in because I had my kid with me, which was one of the reasons, but nobody engaged me. Again, no one engaged me in conversation. Now, again, someone walked in. As soon as I walked in, there was a woman at the counter, which is near the front door, and she said, hello. I said, hello. She acknowledged the baby and all that. And she said, um, she said something along the lines of, uh, do you need anything or you don't need anything, right, or something like that. I said, uh, uh, no, I'm just looking right now. And she said, okay. And that was it. That was the last conversation. Then when I walked out, they said, bye. But nobody engaged me while I was in the store. Now, if you're an actual salesperson, you don't need a person to tell you that they're looking for something because the default response of every customer when you ask them, what can I help you with is I'm just looking. Most of the time, that's what people say. I'm just looking. Nine, nine times out of 10, even if I'm not just looking, then people still say, that they're just looking because they don't want to be bothered by a salesperson. But if you are a good salesperson, then you know how to engage someone anyway, even if they tell you that they're just looking. As a matter of fact, don't even ask the fucking question. <laughs> just assume that they're looking because why would I walk into a suit store if I wasn't thinking about, I had to have, have at least 1% of my brain as an inkling about possibly buying a suit. That's the reason why I walk into a suit store. So no one even tried to sell me anything. This is the reason why I never bought a suit from Suit Supply because had in either one of those occasions, someone tried to sell me something, it's a good chance they would have sold me something. So if anyone, again, who works at Suit Supply or knows anyone who works at Suit Supply, uh, y'all need to fire your sales staff because these people are not salespeople. They are order takers. And there's a big difference between an order taker and a salesperson. An order taker waits for the customer to come to them. A salesperson goes and creates customers, all from within the people who walk into the store. So any of you who is in sales, uh, you should take that message to heart and apply it in your business. The whole uh, getting back to where we are, we're still on point number one here. The topic, once again, is why you're not getting better at your job. Many people are just comfortable having their job. 
and Suit Supply, I used them as an example because they are a retail store. Retail are usually stores you'll see if you go into your local mall or shopping center, these are retail. And they are often hiring, again, entry level positions. Entry level does not mean that you are not necessarily good or that you're not valuable or that you cannot make a significant amount of money at these jobs because you can. Entry level simply means you don't need to have any, uh, there are not a ton of prerequisites in order for you to get the job. Meaning I could get a job at Suit Supply right now, not because I have any uh, in-depth experience in selling suits. I actually have zero experience in selling suits. I have experience buying and wearing suits, but none in selling them. I don't need any. I can get hired there as long as I can pass the, you know, the, what they call it, the interview process and the screening and all of that. Meaning there are some jobs where you have to have some kind of background experience. For example, there's a book I was reading. They were talking about this guy who worked at, I believe it was Merrill Lynch, a financial firm, where you have to have some type of degree in order to even get into the trainee program. And then through the 18 months of the trainee program, by the end of the program, you have to have, I believe the number was, I can't remember what the number was, but let's just use uh, fake numbers here because I can't remember the exact number. That by the end of the 18 months, you as a new financial advisor or whatever the title was, you had to have $100,000 in assets under management. It might have been a million dollars, but whatever the number was, it doesn't matter. You had to have $100,000 in assets under management at the end of the 18 months. And if not, you were dropped from the program. And out of 100 people who entered the program, about 2% make it. Now, that's, a con that's not an entry-level job just to give you all a, a juxtaposition here. So finishing on point number one here, many people are just happy having a position and they're not really concerned about getting better or even being good at the position that they have. Hence my, ex my example, my lived experience of walking into a suit store and nobody trying to sell me a suit when I'm already in the suit store. All right, somebody had just engaged me in conversation. They probably would have got enough information to it, at least worst case scenario, even if I didn't buy anything. Worst case scenario, they would have gave me their business card and said, OK, uh, you are ready to come buy a suit or you want to come try some things on. We can show you how these things look or you want to make sure the cut is right. Because I found in my experience, I like uh, European cut suits fit better on me just because I'm tall and slender, whereas a lot of American suits are made for uh, men who tend to grow horizontally rather than vertically. If you get what I'm saying, they don't fit right on me, the American suits that I have tried. But doesn't mean that there aren't any because, again, I've seen dudes who are around my size wearing suits from Suit Supply and they actually look good. So I would give Suit Supply a try if Suit Supply would give me a try. All right? They didn't try to sell to me. It's not like I didn't walk in the store. And this is what happens when people are not getting people are not getting better at their job. This is one of the results of people not getting better at their job. They let opportunities walk right in front of them because they don't care. And this is not really their issue. This is really the issue of you, manager, you, HR person, you, boss. You check writer, or you got these people working for you and they are watching money walk right out of the door and costing you money and you don't even realize it because you hired these bums and you are you have them on your payroll. So this is really on you. Any of you who has staff and you better be checking these people and making sure they're doing their damn jobs. Many people who have jobs are just doing enough to maintain the status quo and exist in neutral. This is not new. This is common and it will never go away. Most people in life are just wanting to exist in neutral and maintain the status quo and just do enough that they don't uh, get fired, relatively speaking, from life, but they're not doing enough that they get promoted in life either. They just want to stay in the same spot. This is how most people live. Most people are average. This is a, a failing mentality because there is no neutral in the universe. There's no such thing as staying in the same spot and maintaining the status quo. Those are oxymorons. Because in life, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You're building or you're destroying. You are contributing to a situation or you're taking away from it. There is no in-between. Just because you are continually drawing a paycheck from your job does not mean you are contributing to the job. Just because you are drawing a paycheck from your job does not mean you are contributing to the job. It just means that whoever is paying you hasn't found a way or a good enough reason for replacing you yet. Or they are just not conscious about the fact that you are a waste of space and, it, and or they haven't built up enough energy to break their own inertia and fire your ass. That's the reason why you have a job. It doesn't mean you're actually good. So none of you should take the fact that you are keeping your job to mean that you're actually good at your job. Those are two different things. Just because you're there doesn't mean that you're doing well. It does not mean that at all. Often it's because you have a uh, impotent boss who doesn't even realize what's going on or doesn't have the balls to do something about what's going on. And that's why the mediocrity is allowed to persist 
where you work, you being the mediocrity. I'm not talking about mediocrity in the environment. I'm talking about you personally. You are the mediocrity and your boss just doesn't realize what's happening or, again, doesn't have the gumption to do anything about it. And this is why you know, mediocrity is allowed to exist in life. If, if uh, your higher being, whoever, whatever you call your higher being, God, Allah, anything like that, didn't allow and did not tolerate mediocrity, then there'd be a lot more space on Earth. So, you know, Bill Gates want to do population control. Uh, it would happen very quickly and we wouldn't even have that problem if uh, your higher being just did not tolerate mediocrity because a lot of people would be dead uh, as of right now. Moving on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is why you are not getting better at your job. Number two, you are a robot who only does what is asked of you and you are not looking for ways to improve the circumstance of the environment which you occupy. Let me say that sentence again. The reason why you're not getting better at your job is because you are a robot. I'll explain what that means in a moment. Who only does what is asked of you and you're not looking for ways to improve the circumstance of the environment which you occupy. Meaning, whatever your job description says, you're willing to do that, but you are not going to go one step further than that. You do only what's asked of you, you don't do any more. Napoleon Hill, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, he laid out the 17 principles of success. If you are not familiar with the 17 principles of success, I suggest that you get familiar with the 17 principles of success because they are key to your success. I covered them, as a matter of fact, in episodes number 183 and 184. Napoleon Hill's 17 principles of personal achievement is actually what he called it. One of those 17 principles is going the extra mile. Some of you may be familiar with the cliche that there is never any, there is never a traffic jam on the extra mile. Meaning, most people never go the extra mile. Most people never go the first mile, let alone the extra mile. I just told you, at the end of point number one, most people are average and mediocre. And most, in most of life, if you look around long enough, it's just that average people randomly selected, most of them are average and mediocre. And one of the reasons people don't get better at their job is because of this mediocre mindset that they are just okay with just doing, again, only what is asked. They don't go, again, they go the first mile, but they never go the extra mile. And I would say about 85% of people fit this description. Just in, as a whole in general, 85% of people fit this description. Those of you who are employers, if you have many employees on your team, if you have, let's say if you have a company of 100 people, I would say about 85% of them, 80 to 85% are this, they're mediocre people. The bigger your organization gets, the more mediocrity tends to seep in. It just happens. This is, this is, the, law of, this is the law of entropy. That you're, you're not able to micromanage everything happening in your organization. The bigger it gets. And once it gets, gets to this size, you, can, you don't even know everybody who works there. So guaranteed you got some mediocre people there. You don't, and you don't even know it. And you are not even responsible for bringing them on. But it's still the, your organization. Many people just do what is asked of them in life and in their careers. Whatever's asked of them, that's what they do. They don't do anything extra, and they never even think about doing anything extra. They don't even consider how they can make a situation better. They don't even think about it. They just do whatever you tell them to do, and if you don't tell them to do it, it doesn't happen. They take no initiative. What is the fourth principle that I talk about when I introduce this show every day? The personal initiative to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Most people have no personal initiative. This is why most people live life by default, meaning... Whatever happens to them is where their life ends up. They don't happen to life. Life happens to them. That's how most people live. That's why most people are average. I was having a conversation with my assistant this morning, and I said to her, I want you to come up with some things that we could do because she manages uh, all of my uh, social media postings and contents and stuff like that. And I said, all right, since you're doing this and you're seeing so much of what we have going on, tomorrow I want you to bring me 10 ideas for what we can do that that will allow us to get more attraction out of what we're doing on social media. And I didn't go further with her on the subject, but I will go further with her on the subject tomorrow. This is not tomorrow from when you're hearing this, but from when I'm recording it of, hey, I'm going to remind her of something I've already told her. Like, I don't need you to be a robot because if all you are is a robot and that's all you prove yourself to be, well, it's only a matter of time before some AI software comes around with which I will replace you and pay a lot less for the AI than I have to pay you. And she's going to know that. And I don't know if she listens to this episode. I don't know if she's listening, but I'm recording this way before it comes out. So if she's still working for me by the time she hears this, then she probably already got this message loud and clear. And I don't mind her getting it again to listen to this episode. And this is a big thing for any of us who's ambitious and looking to grow, especially if we have other people around us. If you bring other people to be around you, 
This is often based in just people's complacency. People just have a general complacency about life or a general fear about life. Either one, neither one leads to where you want to go. The complacency can be, I'm good where I'm at and I don't want to do anything different. I don't want to rock the boat. I just want to keep doing the same things and I'm okay with being okay. Or the fear of doing anything that would rock the boat and shake up the system. I remember reading Shaquille O'Neal's book. Those of you, most of you probably know who Shaquille O'Neal is. Seven foot basketball player, former basketball player, now a TV analyst and he does a lot of business things. He talked about how when he was at Louisiana State University, where he went to college, he had a teammate named Stanley Roberts. And Stanley was a big guy as well, who I believe was a year or two ahead of Shaquille. And Stanley Roberts was very talented, according to Shaq, just as talented, if not more talented, or at least more skilled, had just as much game and ability as Shaq did, and was his size and all of that stuff. And Stanley Roberts was, Shaq even, I think, even went far as saying this, Stanley Roberts was a better player than Shaquille O'Neal was, at least in college when Shaq first got there. And many of you don't know who Stanley Roberts is. Well, there's a reason for that, because Shaq went on to say that when he would practice against Stanley, if Stanley got angry or he got a reason to get activated, he would just destroy anybody. He would even destroy Shaq in practice. When he got angry, he had a, you know, a fire lit under his ass to do that. But other than that, other than those situations, Stanley was just okay with just being okay. There's another story about Stanley that I read where he did play in the NBA, but he didn't play long and he wasn't a, a star and a known name. Again, many of you or even basketball fans don't even know who this guy is, never heard the name before. Stanley was playing in the NBA, and this was in the mid to late 90s. In one particular game, he was playing against the Chicago Bulls. This is Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen days. And he was just killing the Bulls. He had a great game. He was just dominating the Bulls. I, I don't know who won the game. I think the Bulls ended up winning the game, but Stanley had a great game personally himself. And according to reports, after the game ended, this great game that he had against the Bulls, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, chased him down after the game in the, the tunnel. If you ever watch a basketball game, you see all the players going into the tunnel after the game to the locker rooms. They chased him down in the tunnel after the game and said, man, and they were chastising him after they just competed against him. They said, man, do you know how fucking rich and famous you would be if you play like that every game? And they were saying this after they just played against him. And this is the complacency that, that Shaq described and that this news report described about this particular guy, not about bashing this guy, I'm just using him because it came to mind. But this is how many people live their lives. They just have a, a general complacency about where they're at and don't even think about, man, what if I just activated myself to do more? How much better would life be for me? So here's the problem with these mentalities. The fear of doing anything that would rock the boat or the complacency of I just want to stay here and you know, keep the boat exactly where it is. Complacent sheep become wool coats. Complacent pigs become bacon and sausage and hot dogs, I guess. Complacent cows become burgers and steaks. Complacent turkeys become Thanksgiving dinner. Everybody understand those analogies? Rewind it if you didn't listen to it over and over again until you understand it. You, as a human, have a much bigger and more complex brain than these animals that I just mentioned. Which means you cannot afford to grow complacent and think that just because you're in a place means you'll always be in that place. Again, this is what the pigs think and the cows think and the sheep think and the turkeys think before they become dinner. You will be replaced if you get complacent. Complacency gets you replaced. That's a good one right there. Should I say it again? Let me say it again. Complacency gets you replaced. You need to pay attention to what's going on in your environment. Ask yourself proactive questions like, what can I do to make this situation better? How can I improve on what's going on here? How can I make the status quo better? How can I raise the level of the environment of this organization? Regarding fear, if you allow the, your fear of shaking up the system to keep you from trying to make things better, then you will only be attracted to people who have the same fear that you have. It means you're pretty much dying in place because you're hanging around a bunch of fearful people. And you're definitely not growing. And to be fair, there are plenty of spaces in life that will happily accommodate people just like you. But I doubt you will be happy in those places because if you're the type of person who listens to this show, you're an ambitious person, you have big goals, you want to achieve a lot more than what you've achieved up to this point, you wouldn't be happy hanging around a bunch of other people who are complacent and fearful. But if you're complacent and fearful, well, guess what kind of people you're going to keep attracting? I'll let you fill in that blank as we move on to point number three. Today's topic, once again, is why you are not getting better at your job. Number three, you lack personal initiative and you lack ambition. 
This doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. I know a whole lot of people who have no initiative and no ambition. Most people have no initiative nor ambition. So if I, if I actually thought that made you a bad person, that means I would dislike a whole lot of people. Ambition is a strong desire or determination to achieve something. That's the definition of the word. Most people do not have this. Now, most people, many people will talk about having a strong desire or determination to achieve something, but they don't actually have it. They're talking about it, but they ain't got it. Now, you ever hear somebody talking about something that they don't have? All right. So that's, that's how ambition works. As I said, it doesn't make you bad to not have ambition. It just makes you average when you don't have ambition. And just as a newsflash, this show is not designed for average people. I don't make this show thinking that I'm talking to average people trying to talk you out of your averageness. I'm talking to people who are ambitious, but sometimes you need a, a splash of cold water in your face, a, a slap across the face, metaphorically, that is, to remind you of what ambition is and what it looks and feels like. Because some of you sometimes get caught sleepwalking and forgetting what ambition is supposed to actually be. It's not just talking about it. It's actual actions, doing things, not just talking about them. So I'm pointing this out to let you know that you may be in the wrong place if you have no ambition. Now, if you have no personal initiative, you also may be in the wrong place. But I would guess you don't have I would guess you don't have the issue of not having initiative. You listen to this show, assuming that you wouldn't found the show on your own volition. Now, if somebody made you made you listen to this. You're in the car right now. Somebody just turned this on and they forced you to listen to it. Then that might be a different story. But most of the people who listen to the show, you went and found it on purpose and you listen to this episode through your own uh, again, your own actions under your own power. So I share it here to tailor the message. What I, the message that I share here, rather, are tailored to people who want to do something that most people are not doing. And you want to achieve above the level of average. So if you find yourself not getting better at your job and you realize it's because you don't really want to get better or you have no strong desires to achieve anything, I'm letting you know this now so you don't use up too much of your most valuable resource being your time listening to someone like me we're talking about something that's simply not on your radar. Now, there is one caveat and one uh, life raft that I'll throw out to any lifesaver that I'll throw out to any of you who I just described is that maybe you just have the wrong job. Sometimes somebody just somebody has all the ambition. You have the determination. You have the initiative. You're just applying it in the wrong way. You're just you got your ladder leaning up, leaning up against the wrong building. If you move the ladder to another building, then all of a sudden you'll be activated. So sometimes it's that. Sometimes you just got the wrong strategy, the wrong plan of action. So maybe you need to fix that. Maybe you need to fix you. Maybe you need to fix both. But either way, something needs to be fixed. You can't just keep doing the same thing that you've been doing up to this point. With that said, let's recap today's class, which is why you are not getting better at your job. Again, I thought about this topic when I was looking at a basketball player, and I realized this player's been in the pro leagues for several years. He hasn't gotten any better at the skills. He's the exact same player he was when he came into the league. How is that possible when he is a very well-paid individual, but – can't seem to improve at his job. What the hell is he doing when he's supposed to be getting better at his job, when he's supposed to be working on his game? I don't know. And that led me to thinking of these points. Number one, you are comfortable just having your position and you're not really concerned about getting better or even being good in the current role. You're like, right now, you're not even that good and you ain't even trying to get better. All right. This is where most people live. Most people live with the status quo. They live in neutral. And this is a, a Normal mentality for most people, the problem is, is a failing mentality because there's no such thing as neutral. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. Number two, you're a robot who only does what is asked of you and you are not looking for ways to improve the circumstances, the environment which you occupy. I want to let all of you know, any of you who do, does any work that is based on uh, computers or the internet, if you're this type of person, you just do what is asked of you, you're not doing anything different, it's going to be about a three to five year span that you have to keep collecting a paycheck before artificial intelligence software replaces you completely and you have no job whatsoever. I guarantee you that. That's not a theory. That is not an assumption. I'm telling you that's absolutely happening. Within three to five years, if you're an employee who does work on computers and the internet mostly, or the phone even, and you only do what is asked of you and nothing more, there is an engineer in Silicon Valley working on, a, working on code. He's coding right now. He or she is coding right now a software program that will replace the need for you to be employed. And the software will replace you. That is absolutely happening. You better have a sense of urgency about this one as of yesterday. Point number three, you lack personal initiative and ambition. This doesn't make you a bad person. Uh, most people have no initiative and most people have no ambition. Ambition meaning a strong desire or determination to achieve something. So it doesn't make you average. I mean, it doesn't make you bad. It just makes you average. And most people are average, but this show is not made for average people. So if you're still listening, 
I don't know why, but you either need to go find something in which you don't want to be average or you need to go find a different show to listen to. Your choice. Text me. Make sure you're in my text community so you get my uh, Daily Motivation, Monday Motivation text to come out. My number is 305-384-6894. Work on your game university. You want to work with me directly, have me as your coach. Only one way to do it is in the university. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Link down below in the description. Work on your game. Dre, all day.